Hi. In this video, we're going to have a look at the independence assumptions that we made in the modeling and how they affect the N object density. In the modeling, we made several independence assumptions. The initial prior is independent, the measurements are independent, and the object motion is independent. So a relevant question then is, do all these assumptions mean that the object states are independent? And the answer, perhaps a bit surprisingly, is that actually the object states are not independent, at least not in the general case. We have seen that we have mixtures that correspond to sequences of n object data associations. Now, if we condition on a specific data association hypothesis, then we see that the object states are actually independent, because conditioned on the hypothesis, the n object density is a product of the individual densities for each object. However, this is for a given hypothesis. For the objects to be independent, we have to consider the full mixture density. If the objects were to be independent, then we should be able to factorize the n object density into a product for each object. So the question is, can we, in the general case, describe the n object posterior as a product of mixture densities for each object, as written here on the right? And the answer is no. In the general case, the mixture densities cannot be factorized. However, there are tracking algorithms that are exceptions to this. For example, global nearest neighbor or GNN filter and joint probabilistic data association or JPDA filter. Both of these tracking algorithms approximate the posterior N object density such that the objects are actually independent. And we will learn more about these tracking algorithms later.